Hi guys, welcome on the second presentation related to mastering concurrency. At this presentation, we will firstly make some introduction and set up the technology that we are going to explain and achieve. Uh, what our main goals of shared object and synchronization will be following uh, as next. And after that, I will explain some uh, mutual exclusion. Uh, what is it about by using one very famous fable? After that, uh, we can briefly mention some communication types in concurrent system and uh, rise up basic problems where you can apply your knowledge uh, of deeper knowledge of mutual exclusion. And after that, uh, I will explain under law is very interesting when you want measure the performance of your solution. Okay? So stay tuned. Also, there's important thing that Amdahl's law is also very usable. We are building a house, so in real life. After that, you can you can ask me uh, your questions. So let's start with terminology. Yeah, as we all know, uh, it is wide area when we are speaking uh, about uh, architecture. I mean, the, uh, from hardware point of view, but that is not our point, yeah? We know that uh, exists some special uh, architecture that are uh, mainly focused to boost or speed up the parallel processing and so on. There are countless of uh, different architecture, but uh, let's keep that topic to professionals, hardware professionals. We will focus mainly from the implementation point of view. And for this purpose, let's assume that uh, Multiprocessor, I mean, by multiprocessor, I mean that you have the standard CPU with uh, some multi cores, some cores, and uh, they are communicated uh, via shared memory. Okay. So keep it low profile. And also, here is uh, very useful to understand that uh, this. Uh, Parallel programming is uh, super difficult. So it is complementary approach that uh, it is not enough if you are only good in practice. There is very needed and beneficial, or I can say must have to know also principles behind yeah, to create well working solution and to achieve the goals. Yeah. It's a very difficult topic. So let's start with the first topic uh, about shared object and synchronization. For example, we have a use case that we have to find all prime numbers starting from one, two, three, four, and so on uh, till 10 on 10. So it is a large group of integers and uh, how to how to make it? Okay? We have option just to uh, divide this large group to 10 pieces, for example, uh, execute 10 threads. If you are Java programmer, let's say using executor service and give to each thread uh, its portion okay? to detect and output uh, prime numbers. Okay? It's very easy to implement. So I don't see any, any difficulties yeah, from the implementation point of view. But it is fair enough to do it uh, in this way. I don't think so. Yeah? Because uh, if we want to hit the first goal to have balanced work per, per thread, yeah? imagine that uh, to make mathematical calculation yeah, with uh, small numbers, it is not the same like uh, making uh, mathematical calculation with very, very large number yeah, to detect if it is prime number or not. Yeah? So it is not fair enough from that point of view. 
even if we equally divided the amount of numbers. Yeah. So let's do it in different way. Imagine that we can, for example, have uh, some number holder yeah, with a synchronized method, get me next integer. And each thread has a recognition method which can be used. Yeah, and after the calculation is done, uh, each thread will ask, give me the next number. Yeah. So this number you know, holder will increment the number yeah, and, and it is much fairly balanced yeah, per thread. But uh, if we compare those two approaches, it is clear that uh, we are paying some price to have better balanced work per thread. Yeah? It is you know, because we have to do some synchronization thing. Yeah? It is a very simple example, but uh, my point is that uh, to achieve both goals, we, it is not uh, super easy in every case Yeah, because uh, it is it is uh, related yeah? to have better balance work. You can pay some uh, some price in terms of more robust synchronization. But our goal is also to have the management of synchronization on the as as minimalistic as possible. Yeah, so it is also a complementary approach. What we want to achieve. But bear in mind what I have said that uh, you can price, you can pay some trade off. Yeah? Okay, now uh, this is our goal, which we have to keep in our mind. And here's the main part of my presentation, and it is about mutual exclusion. Mutual exclusion is uh, essential to know how to solve many, many issues. Uh, when we are doing some multi-threaded programs. Yeah? For this purpose, there's one famous fable. This fable was firstly introduced in 1984 uh, at ACN Symposium on principle of distributed computing by Leslie Lampert. So it is almost 40 years old fable. Yeah? And it is still very famous to nowadays. So it's amazing. Yeah. So, okay, let's start. We have uh, two guys, Alice and Bob. They live in their houses and they shared one uh, large garden yeah, between the houses. Yeah. Alice has a cat, Bob has a dog. And they want to achieve that a dog and cat will be never at the same time in a garden. So firstly, yeah, they were thinking how to do it. And for example, let's use uh, phones, yeah? Just call me when you want, but uh, yeah, what is the drawback of this approach, yeah? For example, uh, Bob could have a shower on, on will be on vacation or wants to be on vacation yeah so it is not working as they want it and they have some blockers and you know they want to improve this approach so okay they were thinking together again and alice has a idea let's use a cans that i have a couple of cans with a string the cans is uh, in front of your window, and if I pull the string, the cans fall down. Yeah, and uh, you can see that uh, my cat is unleashed. And if I pull the second can, yeah, uh, I am, I am, my cat comes, uh, came home, yeah, and and you are fine. So uh, what do you have to do? Job is to recover the can so I can use it again, yeah? But again, we have uh, similar issues with this approach that Bob 
could go away for longer period for one month and you have a limited number of hands so it works it is better sending such signals let's say but uh, yeah let's think if we don't have better solution yeah and here's the point how we can how we can solve this material exclusion problem better yeah so let's divide what uh, we have to do by Ali's part and uh, Bob's part yeah Alice firstly she wants to unleash her cat yeah so firstly raise the flag then Alice take a look if uh, Bob's flag is down and if it is yeah you are free to release a pet yeah the cat yeah so oh, that is what uh, Alice has to do yeah it is super simple yeah at this moment but uh, here we go with bob's part and for bob it is more complicated eh? bob wants to uh, unleash his dog so firstly raise the flag then take a look if alice flag is raised or not and consider if it is raised yeah then Bob has to lower his flag, wait until Alice's flag is lowered. Then he is able to raise the flag again. After that, so as soon as Bob's flag is raised and Alice's flag is down, he is able to release his dog. So if we compare those two approaches is both of them are simple but you can see that uh, bob's bob's steps are more complex yeah that is uh, basically i have described very simple communication protocol yeah let's go here to define some properties of mutual exclusion so it is clear that uh, never share the same resource at the same time like we did with a garden yeah, in the fable and back to the it it means that one thread at the time can execute a particular block of code the question is how to evaluate the protocol this protocol if it is good designed or not yeah it's working well yeah we achieved the goal but uh, let's go deeper yeah let's define three parameters it is deadlock freedom starvation freedom and waiting how fault tolerant are we yeah to the other side or to the situation we don't want yeah it is not it is not uh back yeah fault tolerance so let's uh, go to the to our protocol again and my question is how how fine we are with deadlock freedom yeah i i can say yeah we are fine we are, we are good yeah because of this part of bob's part yeah if they both rise the flag at the same time yeah bob knows what to do yeah he has to lower his uh, the flag wait until Alice's flag is lowered so there is some uh, uh so this parameter that is freedom is covered well yeah then they know what to do yeah let's take a look on starvation freedom yeah imagine that using this protocol yeah, in garden you can have a food for your pet yeah so how good are our protocol how good is our protocol from that point of view starvation freedom maybe it is clear that uh, alice alice cat has a preference yeah because if we if they both prices the flag at the same time so they both want to go to the garden at the same time yeah uh, bob has to wait so his pet 
uh, has to wait. Yeah. So it uh, if it happens, for, for instance, ten times in a row, yeah, you can imagine that uh, with this parameter, we are not so so in, in good shape. Yeah. And also, let's consider the weighting or fault tolerance. How tolerant we are to the to the opposite side. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we are also not so so well with this parameter because you can see that uh, the Bob has to wait until Alice Cat is uh, back home. Yeah. Also, it is here hidden. Yeah, but if uh, if uh, Bob flex is up, yeah, Alice also has to wait, yeah, to to be able to release a pet, yeah. So we have to wait, yeah, in this case. So what does it mean, yeah? These parameters, uh, please don't understand that they are binary, yeah. The question is how how much freedom my protocol allows me. Yeah. How much data freedom? How much starvation? Yeah, and and waiting. Those parameters are to help you to understand the the quality of your uh, protocol uh, for your use case. Yeah. So you can mix it as it is beneficial to fulfill the goals. Yeah. Also, keep in mind what I what we have said in the beginning of the presentation that uh, you have to mix those parameters with the goals to keep the synchronization as minimalistic as you can and to balance the equally the work among the threats yeah is important so is something like art that you have to combine more things together to to have a good way yeah and it is hard to say what is uh, or it is impossible to say what is only good way to follow because you have to mix it yeah and it depends on, on your use case. So about the communication types, very briefly in concurrent system, we distinguish the transient and persistent type. Uh, transient requires participation at the same time. Uh, you can imagine that uh, using our fable, that, that uh, the phone calls yeah, is participation at the same time. Yeah. But for mutual exclusion related program problems, uh, it uh, requires persistent communication type. Yeah. So you can participate at different times. You know more about mutual exclusion from the point of or from the look of computer science. Yeah. So the basic problems, which are also essential. Uh, in development, like consumer producer, or the writer, yeah, is everything related to mutual exclusion. Yeah. So uh, take your time, think about this problem using uh, those parameters which I have defined, and you will see. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the Amdahl's law. This law is to calculate the latency or speed up if you execute the calculation yeah the the protocol in parallel way in compare to single core yeah so if we parallelize some job to do yeah in compare if we don't parallelize it yeah so uh, you can see the formula on the screen and the P is fraction of the job became paralyzed and and N is 
number of cores we we can use, or in other words, uh, number of threads. Yeah. So let's use uh, one example. So imagine that we have six equal units and five cores available. Yeah. So our n is five. P is how uh, how we can parallelize the the job. It is five slash six. So in real life, imagine that we have six identical rooms and we have five pentops. Yeah. So if we put those numbers to the formula, we can calculate that our S is equal to three. Yeah. So to paint six rooms using five painters, we get three times performance boost in compared to one painter. Also, in other words, uh, if one painter does the job in three hours, five painters do the job in one hour. Yeah. So you will pay five times more yeah, uh, to get free time boost by under law. It could be even worse if we go to the bigger numbers, like we have 11 rooms, 11 units, and 10 painters or 10 cores. So in this case, uh, S is uh, one slash uh, uh, one slash 11 plus, uh, you can see on the screen, uh, and the result is uh, five and a half. So, what does it mean? Yeah, if we paralyze 10 units and we miss only a small piece, which is not well paralyzed, yeah, so it is not completely fairly uh, divided the amount of work per threads, yeah, in other words, we miss only 10%, or so we have one extra unit uncovered. Our performance is almost half in a real life language, yeah. Uh, be very careful if you are hiring uh, workers to build your house. Yeah, you have to be perfectly efficient. Yeah, uh, how to divide work? Yeah, how to split the units among the cores. And uh, if you are going back to the IT, yeah, uh, you can have algorithms which are running constantly for amounts of years. So if you miss a small piece yeah, or small disbalance be between the, the threads, you can pay a high price in terms of performance. Yeah. And also uh, imagine we are comparing to single core, 5.5 yeah. boost and compared to one core without synchronization things to do. Yeah? So the complexity is at a minimum level. So to sum up everything, uh, what I wanted to share with you, we have defined goals. We have defined the goals. Yeah? So keep the synchronization as, as minimalistic as you can take care about uh, balancing work among, among the cores. Yeah. Uh, here, Amdahl's law could help you a lot. Also, bear, uh, we should bear in mind that uh, how to deal with uh, mutual exclusion problems using those three parameters like weighting, uh, starvation freedom and deadlock freedom. I can, uh, we have some time, so I can jump back to the protocol we have defined uh, for material exclusion problem. Let's say we want to improve the starvation freedom yeah, 
parameter of our protocol, how we can think to improve it, yeah? Starvation freedom, yeah? It's pretty easy, yeah? Let's make the Bob, uh, the Alice side, the same for Bob. So we don't have this, uh, let's say, deadly freedom, yeah? Covered. So it is the same. The stagnation freedom is uh, better, but we are paying the price that our our deadlock freedom is uh, super bad. Yeah, we can we can go to the deadlock pretty easily. Yeah, but if we don't, there is no starvation. Uh, starvation freedom is uh, very very well covered. Yeah, so then we can introduce different different uh, sort of solution to when that in happened like timeouts. Yeah, when we are in when we are looking too long, yeah, we start the process, for instance, yeah. How we can improve the waiting fault tolerance, yeah? Like, like here, or like uh, it is hidden here that uh, we are uh, waiting for Alice flag to be lowered, yeah? What we can do, just the waiting, we can extend some extra steps so when you are going here, do something more beneficial. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Train your your dog. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, to give him a job. Yeah, but 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 uh, by doing that, we are bringing more complexity to our algorithm to our protocol. Yeah, and it is a little bit against what we have defined in our goals. Keep the synchronization as minimal as we can, yeah, to prevent possible issues, yeah. So this is uh, just uh, example how we can think, we can improve by adding or reducing some steps uh, within our protocol, yeah. So be careful with that. Something uh, sometimes less is more. That's basically all from my side. So thank you very much for paying attention. I hope you learned something uh, something new. Okay, guys, uh, this was for presentation. Need if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. So thanks, Vlado. It was cool. Yeah, and I would like to ask about this um, Andal's law. Like, what does it like say? Does it mean that you shouldn't paralyze too off, like too much, or you should balance these units and cores? Both of them. Yes, yeah. it is. Not okay. It is uh, many times it is easier not to balance, uh, not to paralyze too much, because. If you are going to higher numbers, yeah, in terms of units and cores, details could cause you a lot, yeah, and it is not beneficial to to have such such troubles, yeah, or such pay high price for that, yeah. So, uh, I I can recommend that if you don't need and it is not your goal to be super in performance, don't do it, yeah. It is, it is easy to make a mistake. Yeah? And if we want or if it is needed to paralyze the calculation in your program, yeah, try to start with uh, low numbers, of course, and try to balance as much as you can the amount of work per thread. Yeah? That is the that is safer path to go. Yeah? So, it is, it is not true if I have uh, 100 cores, for example, yeah, available that I am super girl uh, because it, it will be extremely hard yeah, to use full potential of your 100 cores and you can pay uh, big money for it. Yeah. That is the idea behind. Yeah. So let's start with minimal course 
you need yeah, and make it efficient. And if you are going higher and higher, it will be much more in terms of difficulty yeah, to, to achieve the goal. Yeah. And does this apply also if there are like no shared resources? I think I think then you can run it or like be still still be like cautious. I think it's more applied to these like mutual exclusion problems and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you can, uh, for example, it is not the issue uh, if you have a strict or you can slice the data to to the same amount. Yeah, it's not issue to execute some separated threads yeah, to do the job. Yeah. But uh, if you if it is more complex, and uh, in reality, it is uh, more often uh, complicated. Yeah, like I explained in the first example, just with uh, the integer numbers. Yeah, that it is not about only about the amount of pieces in your groups of data, but it is also about what kind of data is in the group. Yeah. So that, that is everything you, you have to evaluate yeah, when you are going to use this parallel approach. Yeah. Thanks. You are welcome. Okay, great. Uh, if you have uh, in your mind any other questions, feel free to ping me or uh, we can, we can go back and, and discuss some topics, yeah, so, no problem. So I wish you to have a great day and see you soon. So thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, Lado. Good stuff. Thanks, Lado. Thank you. Bye-bye.